If you're new to this channel, you may consider subscribing and hit the bell icon so that you continue to receive the updates. Please share it with all others who might benefit. Let's get started. So we are in the process of decoding the underlying concepts of the fascinating neural networks. And in this tutorial, we're going to talk about why do we need activation functions? So if you search a little bit on this, you'll find out that activation functions introduce non-linearity to neural networks, enabling them to model complex patterns and relationships in data. So we understand that we need to introduce non-linearity, and that's what the activation functions help us with. But let's just try to imagine the world without activation functions and see what happens. And that is when you'll be able to realize how important these activation functions are. Let's take an example. Let's say we have a very simple neural network where we have two inputs. We have three neurons in the hidden layer and one output. And this is a fully connected neural network. So every neuron is connected to the neurons in the subsequent layers. So for example, neuron one is connected to the first neuron in the hidden layer, the second neuron and the third neuron. Likewise, the second input neuron is connected to the first neuron in the hidden layer, second neuron and the third neuron. And these hidden neurons are likewise connected to the output neuron. This is our neural network. Let's say the set of weights for the connection of the first neuron with the hidden neurons are like this. So we have kind of represented them in bold connections like this. So we can say this is where the first input neuron is connected to the hidden neuron one. The same input neuron is connected to hidden neuron two and then hidden neuron three. Likewise, we'll have the connections of the second input neuron with all the hidden neurons, and these are the kind of weights that we have. If you look at them together, this is how the scenario is. And now, of course, you'll have the connections between the hidden neurons and the output neurons, and these also have some weights. So we have represented these weights as integers just for ease of calculations. We are really not interested in complex calculations right now, so we've taken simple positive and negative integers, and that's how we'll drive home the point. Let's say this first input neuron is receiving an input x1, which could be any feature, and the second neuron is receiving an input, which is x2. Now let's examine what will happen at each hidden neuron. We know that input neurons are passive. They don't really do any transformation to the inputs, so they just simply pass on the inputs to the next layers. Next layer is where the aggregation and activation used to happen. But right now, we're only talking about aggregation because we want to see what happens when we don't do an activation. So now let's focus on each of these neurons one by one and focus on the kind of inputs that they are receiving. Now, if you look at the first neuron of the hidden layer, it's receiving two inputs from the first input neuron and the second input neuron, and these are the weights. So if we just do the aggregation here, then we'll be getting something like this, two times x1 plus three times x2. Likewise, if we concentrate on the second neuron, it's again getting two inputs. We'll say five times x1, negative two times x2. And the third neuron, negative x1 plus four times x2. So this is where we are, and we don't have any activation right now. We simply are doing aggregations. Now, these aggregated inputs will be passed on to the next neuron, which happens to be the output neuron in our case. And of course, we have weights associated with these connections as well. So let's bring the weights here first. And now you can imagine it will be negative three times this value plus one times this value plus five times this value. Now we simply have to add these. So this value is going to be negative six x1 plus five x1, negative five x1. So negative six and negative five is negative 11. Negative 11 plus five is negative six. So we'll get the coefficient of x1 as negative six. Likewise, we can multiply negative three with this three, we'll get nine x2, negative two x2, that will be negative 11 x2 in total, and then plus 20 x2. So this will give us nine x2. So if we now add all these values, we are going to get something like this. The output is going to be negative six x1 plus nine x2. We've imagined that at the output layer, again, we don't have any activation it's totally free from activation. So whatever we aggregated, we passed on to the output layer and the output layer just simply adds that up and further gives an output, which is negative six x1 plus nine x2. So far, the scenario is exactly like this. So we have all the weights, we had to do a lot of calculations and we had to, of course, then do the aggregations at different stages at the hidden layer as well as the output layer. 
But can there be a simpler way to achieve this? Let's have a look at this. Let's say we don't have any hidden layer. We just have the input connected to the output and the connection weights are negative six and nine. So this is x1, negative six x1 plus nine x2. This is what the output would be. And this is the exact same output we got through these many calculations. In fact, if you know, this is also just a representation. These neurons, the input neurons are passive neurons. They don't do any processing. So could we represent this in an even simpler way? Maybe we could do it like this. Now we simply have X1 and X2 connected to a neuron, which is not even doing any activation. So it simply gives an output, which is negative six X1 plus nine X2. So what are we trying to say? The point here is, if we do not use an activation function at the hidden layer or use a linear activation function at the hidden layer, then your network, be it any number of hidden layers, reduces to one single neuron. And we know the limitations of one neuron. What's the point of having a network when the hidden layers don't really help us solve a complex problem? That's why we need activation functions. The bottom line is the linear function of a linear function is always going to be linear. And in that case, you don't need these hidden neurons. So would there ever be a scenario where we do not use an activation function? The only exception to this is the output layer. And that too, when we are solving problems involving regression, essentially we are interested in predicting a value. But when we are interested in predicting a value, we don't really want to confine it to a range between zero and one or make it like probabilities. In that case, only at the output layer, we may not want to use any activation function. But not using activation functions at the hidden layer or using some kind of a linear activation only, which let's say multiplies something to the inputs, would eventually boil down to the network being just as good as a single neuron. That is why we would always need a non-linear activation function at the hidden neurons. Now with this motivation, we will start looking at different activation functions and we'll do comparisons between them to understand what are the limitations or strengths that these activation functions bring. That's next.